years, the Floriology Institute also offers hands-on floral design classes taught by AIFD accredited instructors. This year, we've revamped classes to include some business and marketing lectures, along with one-on-one -on -one training sessions about social media, merchandising, and best business practices. You can get more information about these specific classes and see our upcoming schedule by visiting floriologyinstitute.com. We also have something fun in store for later on this year, our second Floriology on the Road class. You can also find more information about that on floriologyinstitute.com. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Renato Cruz Sogecko, Floriology, Floriology Institute Business Instructor and Head of Digital Strategy. Hey, Ashley, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, and, and thank you for uh, coming to our uh, second uh, technology series and second uh, technology webinar, uh, Search Engine Marketing, SEM Demystified. So um, I just wanted to uh, do a quick introdu introduction of, of myself. I'm the uh, current VP of uh, Digital Strategy and Education here at BloomNet, business educator at the Floriology Institute and I also served as the CIO for the Society of American Forests. But all those fancy titles uh, mean is just, is just I've been in this industry for, for quite a, a long time. So um, I think, Ashley, you called me vintage, but uh, I'm definitely a relic. Um, but one thing with all that experience uh, I've, I've, I've done is, is I've worked with hundreds, if not thousands, of florists. And given that uh, my titles uh, have um, been associated with technology, uh, that has been my focus for literally the past 20 years of my career in the flower industry. So within that uh, 20 years, I've gained a lot of great insights. Um, through my past work with SAF, um, I was serving as uh, the uh, liaison for the Retailers Council. So um, every, you know, twice a year, uh, we had a great focus group talking about all these, uh, you know, technology challenges that have popped up since the internet uh, was born 20 years ago. And also I've had access to a lot of um, you know, technology resources, uh, especially uh, you know, with the companies that uh, directly impact your business, such as Google, uh, Microsoft, and Facebook. So a lot of um, this knowledge is really an amalgam of, of, of all those sources of information. So uh, a little, uh, another bit of housekeeping, please watch uh, for an email that will include a survey and, and let us know if, if you've learned uh, something from this webinar and uh, please suggest any other topics that you would want us uh, to explore. Uh, slides will also be available um, to, all web, uh, to, to all webinar attendees. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the agenda for today. So SEM uh, demystified. Um, what we're going to try to cover is really a high-level overview of what SEM is, um, the value proposition of SEM to your uh, floral business. And we're also going to give you uh, tips on how to get started, um, you know, your campaign right. So let's talk about what search engine optimization is. So I think a lot of uh, folks confuse SEM with SEO but there's definitely a clear difference between the two. So uh, you may have heard um, of SEO a lot, just because a lot of marketers say that you have to SEO, uh, SEO optimize your website. What that means is that you, know, you should properly configure your website so it's found in organic searches. So you see that we bolded the word earned. What that means is that um, if you do all the right SEO uh, and apply it to, to your website, the search engines will easily find you through searches that people uh, conduct via the search engine. So when, you, when, when they type in the right words and they match up with um, how your website is configured, it's quite simple. You will be found in those organic searches. So that's what's called uh, earned clicks. SEM, totally different you just downright pay for those clicks. So um, in that case, when you uh, pay for these keywords, uh, your website uh, should appear in, in, the, uh, in the ad section of these search pages. And we'll be looking at a search page in a moment, so uh, you, you'll see exactly what, what I mean by that. So that means uh, when uh, people conduct search, and get this, more than 80% of shoppers use search prior to purchase. So that's a really important fact 
to uh, really absorb. These ads appear uh, from those uh, search clicks. Now, um, search engine marketing, it, it's called a lot of different things. Um, what most people call it is either pay-per-click or PPC. You've also uh, probably have heard uh, it's called cost per click or CPC. Another um, another way it's called is is you know it's not just about clicks nowadays. A lot of search engine uh, marketing services allow you to uh, buy impressions, meaning just shows on on search uh, results, and they call that CPM. And CPM means um, cost per uh, 1,000 impressions. So that's what the M stands for. So advertisers, um, how, how uh, pay-per-click works is that you begin to place bids on these keywords that you think people will use to type uh, in search to find your business. Okay? So other people, other, other advertisers will also place bids on the same keywords. So if you happen to be in a you know, rural area, your cost per click or, 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 or pay per click will probably uh, be lower than someone who is living in an urban area just because, quite frankly, you have less competition. So as more people bid for these keywords, then that's uh, what raises the cost per click. So in theory, the highest bid usually wins uh, when it comes to cost per click. But one thing that um, we've discovered that there are other factors in like Google and Bing's algorithm that um, could actually get you uh, more shows uh, and, and higher and higher um, ad ranks than someone who's paying more just because your website and your ad uh, are, are better quality and are more relevant. So uh, Google um, calls this quality score. So we'll talk about that um, as well in, in the session. So. So we have a search for uh, uh, someone who's doing a search for a product and they happen to type in the search words and your ads do trigger. So your ads may appear on that search page, but guess what? They, you won't be charged until they actually click the ad and go to the landing page, uh, which you specified in the ad. So hence, that's why it's called pay-per-click. So there's an opportunity here. Um, just, you know, if you think about it, you know, just to brand your website. So you could, uh, you you may be investing some money and thinking that, oh, you know what, a lot of people may be uh, clicking my um, my ad, but that's not normally the case. I mean, a lot of people will actually see your ad uh, and and never click on it. But it's still a good opportunity for you to at least uh, get your brand out there. So let's move on. So this is a typical search page, a search engine result. Uh, page. Um, uh, for those in the SEM community, we call this a SERP. So, you know, a week ago, I was uh, shopping around for a new car, and my search terms were Honda Accord Hybrid. So, you see that um, at the top, you have the ads, and at the bottom, you have the organic listings. But there's something very interesting about these results. So, although my search was for a Honda Accord Hybrid, Check out the very top uh, ad result. It's an ad from Volkswagen. So in this case, and we'll talk about this a lot, uh, a lot more later, is Volkswagen actually bought the uh, keywords Honda Accord Hybrid, and they showed up in the search result. So just keep that in mind, uh, but let's dig into this ad a little bit more. Or I'm sorry, this search um, engine result page a little bit more. So you'll notice where the ads are. They're, um, they're all in the top position of this result page. Now, you know, if you had a desktop screen, and this is from uh, a, a desktop um, result, you'll find that, you know, on any normal desktop, you will see the ads at the top and then some organic links at the bottom. So people will say, well, that's fine because, you know, don't people realize that those are ads and, uh, you know, they'll go straight to the orga organic link. Well, the issue with that is that a lot more people are using mobile devices uh, to conduct their search. In fact, 30, 40 uh, uh, you know, percent of consumers are on a mobile device. So guess what they see? They, only, they probably only see the top two ads. And it takes an action for them to, to use their thumb and scroll down the screen to see organic links. 
So according to a study by uh, MediaTown, this is actually training people to just click on the, uh, on the top a couple links, uh, even when they're on their desktop. So one thing that you've noticed, uh, and uh, you know, for, for those have been, that, that have been um, uh, at advertising for a long time, there's a big difference now between how ads are shown today and how ads were shown even two, two years ago. Um, two years ago, uh, both Google, Bing, and all the uh, search engines um, made the ads very distinctive in that they added a background color uh, to the ad. So uh, before, this section right here, uh, or actually the, these top four ads would have like maybe a yellowish background. But you see that they removed that. And the only thing that distinguishes um, these uh, results from the organic results is a little tiny ad batch. And then if you look at the format of the ads, they look exactly like an, an organic um, result. So, you know, who knows if that's intentional, but uh, bottom line, a lot of consumers would um, sometimes mistake these ads as organic links. So let's get more into the floral space and how um, this relates to um, ads. So the bottom line is, you know, a lot of people, you know, complain about how it just seems like all like the national advertisers are up on the uh, search results. There's a reason for this. It's because florists, local florists, do not invest in search marketing. So this opens up an opportunity for these same competitors or even local competitors that realize that other florists in their local area are not investing. If they were uh, to start investing in ads in their local space, they would um, start dominating the space too. So think about it. The lack of competition allows national competitors to bid low on terms such as Floris Jacksonville, Florida. Remember the thing I mentioned to you at the beginning that, you know, um, the bid for these keywords rises when there's a lot of people uh, bidding for these keywords. So if, if you're not bidding for the keyword or if other local florists are not bidding for these keywords, but a national advertiser says, you know what, I'll bid for these keywords, then uh, their bid for the keyword is actually very low and they could capture um, all these top links. So this is a result, as you see, for Floris Jacksonville, Florida. And like, as you recall, um, from that media to, uh, study that I, uh, you know, that I mentioned, people are starting to be trained just to click on these top links. So this goes a step further. One thing that we discovered last year and, you know, through our connections with Google, uh, they're, they're saying that they, they do recognize this as, as a problem and they're trying to address it. But uh, sometimes it pops up. I mean, like, as you saw, in that first example of a search engine result page, Volkswagen paid for a Honda Accord Hybrid and they appeared at the top search for that particular set of keywords. Now, national competitors, they understand that a lot of florists in uh, regional areas have invested a lot of money in developing their brand and the brand is, uh, of course, your, your business name, okay? So they've really exploited this because guess what they're doing? In addition to bidding for like say Florist Jacksonville, Florida, they're, they're going to go ahead and bid on the exact uh, business name of a florist that may be in um, Jacksonville, Florida. In this case, this is Flowers by George in um, Arlington, Washington. So you see here that uh, if you type in Flowers by George, there's a national marketer that comes up. And it's a direct result because I know for a fact that when this was happening that uh, Flowers by George was not investing in AdWords to at least protect your name. So think about it. Uh, you know, there's another person that's using your business name as a keyword. And if you're not investing in your own business name, it is inexpensive for them to invest in your own name. So, and think of the people, think of the people that are typing in Flowers by George or your, or your business name. These are most probably people that are familiar with your brand. So these are your current customers. So, you know, I, I think we've all done it. Uh, we probably know, okay, like if I were a customer of Flowers by George, I probably know that his URL is www.flowersbygeorge.com. But, um, you know, consumers, God bless them, 
uh, we're all lazy a little bit. So, uh, you know, usually the, the default um, pay, uh, you know, default site on any page that we pop up is usually a search engine. So this is this search engine is, is Bing, of course. But if we're in Google, rather than, than get up to the URL part and type out the entire URL, we would just go and search for Flowers by George. So a lot of uh, folks have uh, exploited this habit, this bad habit of consumers. And then as you see, this is the result. Um, you know, there, there are national uh, competitors that have bid on those names. You know, the business does not. So they appear at the top. And recall what I said. You know, consumers more and more are being trained just to click on the first uh, to click on the first link that they see. So, like you see here, that of course, Flowers by George does appear in the organic link. But recall what we were talking about: um, how habits are changing for people. So, let's get uh, more into uh, how to start advertising uh, in, w with search engine marketing. Um, I mentioned Google. I mentioned Bing. I mentioned, you know, I don't know if I mentioned Yahoo, but Yahoo is another one. Facebook ads is, is another option. But what we recommend doing is starting right away with Google AdWords. And there's no other reason other than they own uh, a significant portion of the market share. So right now, uh, for desktop and mobile, uh, they hover over 85% of market share. So 85% of your customers are using Google. Uh, to conduct these types of searches. Um, you know, once you get into it, you know, what we then recommend is like, you know, uh, you start your AdWords account and, uh, you know, you get used to it and you start investing dollars, you're seeing returns. Uh, and then if you want to expand and capture the rest of the market share, then our next um, recommendation would be Bing. And if you had Bing in Google, then you literally would have about 96 to 97% of the search uh, market share. Um, the other uh, the, the other thing that we won't talk about today in detail is um, you know going you know what what would the third option be? A lot of people would recommend Yahoo, but uh, we would uh, actually uh, recommend Facebook ads. So anyway, uh, let's get back and focus on Google. So Google has a couple of products. They have uh, Google AdWords, and they also have a, a product Google AdWords Express. So we're saying to you, no, stick with Google AdWords. Why? Well, with Google AdWords Express, um, you know, like they tout that it's easier to use, that um, it's like sort of a set it and forget it program, but there are definitely drawbacks uh, to Express. For one, keywords are chosen automatically. So Express will prompt you to, uh, you know, uh, um, designate what industry you belong to. Once it sees that you're a garden, you're a floor, uh, garden center, you're a florist, or what have you, it, it chooses these uh, keywords for you. Not a good thing. Also, all the keywords are all what's called broad matched. And we'll talk about this more later. But um, what that means is that, uh, you, know, you know, the keywords that are chosen, they, they result in you know, potentially more results that are irrelevant to a search. Um, the third thing is that you cannot put any negative keywords. So, uh, you know, that's something, again, I'll, I'll show you later. And lastly, you cannot track conversion for, for AdWords Express. So you can't really gauge whether uh, your AdWords campaign is resulting in sales. So just those uh, four uh, key elements are, are the reasons why we don't choose uh, Google Express to run these campaigns. So um, what's the uh, recommended budget? $20 a day is what we say. And this equates to about $600 a month. And I think a lot of florists are going to say, "Whoa, that that you know that could be a, a lot of money uh, for for a monthly budget." But again, think of what you're doing. So um, we just showed you that a lot of national competitors are bidding uh, for these keywords. Uh, you know that should rightly and then these clicks should rightly be going to your shop. So if you don't even invest um, in in an AdWords campaign, you will never show up at the top. And compounded by the fact that more and more uh, of your customers are just clicking that top link, you're losing out on sales. Now, the second thing that we talked about is how um, national competitors may be bidding on your specific business name. Um, again, these are customers that may be thinking that that top link is you because they had just typed in your business name. So they click on that top link. The whole time they're thinking it's you. 
And then guess what? You may be getting a call. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten a call from someone who's, who, who complained that, oh, you know, I wasn't really satisfied with my order, and they swear that they bought it from your, your shop, when in fact um, it, it was a situation where they probably uh, did a search for your shop, um, you know, thinking it was you, clicked on the link, bought, uh, bought, bought those flowers, and uh, they're going back to you to complain. So, you know, your um, these orders are being siphoned, literally stolen from you. So, what is twenty dollars a day to you to protect your brand? And if you think about it, um, you're buying clicks to your website. Okay. So, six hundred a month. If you were able to recoup the, uh, all those sales that uh, you may have been losing because you weren't advertising, uh, six hundred dollars would actually be a bargain. All right. So, you know, the, you know, the thing that I always um, tell Floris about how, you know, how to prepare for starting um, an AdWords campaign is get your technical resources ready. Because, um, it, you know, I, I was thinking of ways of, well, you know, is there a way to avoid this kind of, you know, the technical um, requirements? There's not. Google AdWords is a, a technical program. Um, Therefore, it, it requires technical expertise. So before you um, start on this, you know, make sure that you, you inform your website provider and developer that you're going to start a campaign. Why? Um, remember that thing about how Google Express does not track conversion, uh, but Google AdWords does? Well, when you uh, start a Google AdWords campaign, the first thing that uh, Google will have you do is install tracking uh, code into your website. Do you know how to do that? Probably not. The second thing that they'll ask you to do to make sure that um, you, uh, you know, fully uh, benefit from a Google AdWords campaign is they'll ask you to install conversion tracking code. So there are two pieces of code that uh, Google will be asking you to install, so be sure that you have uh, that technical uh, resource um, close by. You know, the next thing is that once you start spending about $600 a month, that immediately allows or, or you know, signifies to Google that you're serious in wanting to advertise. So they will uh, assign a Google account manager with you. So one thing that uh, we've done with Forrest in the past is we've just coordinated those calls. Uh, don't get on that phone with a Google account manager unless, that, uh, unless your website provider or developer is on the phone with you. And let them communicate in geek speak uh, versus you. I mean, at least you're on the phone just to understand what's going on. But uh, let them work with your, uh, with your developer to make sure that you set up these accounts right. You know, the last thing that um, we definitely recommend is make sure that you install and confirm access to uh, a Google Analytics account. So what is Google Analytics? I'm sure a lot of you know what it is. You know, it's, it's a, uh, again, a free program from, from Google, uh, which, again, requires you to install a piece of code on your website. But it provides you a ton of information. Where do visitors come from? Is my content effective? Uh, where can the website be improved? And the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the second and third bullet are particularly important um, for, your ad, for the effectiveness of your AdWords campaign. Because remember at the beginning I was, I was many, uh, you mentioning to you how Google um, you know, allows you to rank higher than other people that may be bidding more, more money, because you have more relevant content, right? So, and they and they qualify that as as, as quality score. Now, uh, what what that is is like um, your website uh, or you know the 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 ad that you place on AdWords should uh, really complement any landing page that is on your website. So, if you have uh, an ad that uh, focuses on you know uh, event business. Make sure that goes to a subpage on your website that just strictly talks about event business. Okay, so Google Analytics could provide a lot of this uh, great information to support an ad campaign. Uh, you know, the fourth bullet: Where do visitors abandon the shopping cart? This uh, is, uh, it, you know, a direct reference to conversion on your website. So conversion um, is a really important concept that I think you you should really obsess over. So the average conversion rate for, for most websites, and I think this is like, um, I think 90% of websites out there is 3%. So if you think about it, you know, like you're getting, we will just say a number, uh, 10,000 a month from your website at a 3% conversion rate. 
So if you were to use Google Analytics and find out where people are abandoning the shopping cart and just improve that one area where they seem to be um, saying, oh, you know what, uh, this is too much information I'm entering, I don't know where the buttons are, um, that's valuable information. Because imagine if you were to just increase your conversion rate just by another 3%, literally doubling your conversion rate from 3 to 6%. What's your revenue now? You've just doubled it. Just because uh, d you know, double the consumers are, are, are now converting on your website. So you go from $10,000 to $20,000 in revenue. And of course, um, that impacts the bottom line. So uh, you know, we, we could leave it at that. So anyway, let's talk about how um, AdWords campaigns are, are structured. So once you um, start an account, then you could start managing various campaigns. And these campaigns, um, you know, uh, could be different, you know, differentiated by business segment or objective. So, like, you know, the campaign that we're going to talk about will focus on how to capture uh, local business through local searches. And then another campaign could, ta could target, uh, you know, maybe brides and your wedding business. And yet another campaign could target uh, maybe gathering uh, more funeral business. So each one of these campaigns you could uh, again break down to like different ad groups and and granulate it even more to like different ads um, and you know we'll get more into this but say for example if if, if you have a local hyper uh, a hyper local campaign and you have maybe two ad groups uh, maybe the first ad group could be you know zip codes that are within two or three miles of you the second ad group could be um, zip codes that are three to five miles away and each ad could focus on perhaps different cities or zips that were are within those ad groups and and you could target those specific zip codes and cities uh, within these campaigns so uh, think about that as we go through um, creating a campaign so once you start um, so once you get into uh, Google AdWords and you start your first campaign you get a big red button uh, a plus campaign you hit that and what we suggest is just, you know, let's just start with the basics, um, you know, get your feet wet and, and select search network only. So for the next screen, it takes you to, um, you know, I, I call this campaign hyper local brand protection. And then you'll see why I called it that. But I went ahead and just selected a standard. Um, then you go down here, uh, you, you click a search, a Google search network, include search partners. Now this is where it's really important uh, for you as a florist, just because um, you know we have we, we have delivery zones, we, we have specific cities and zip codes uh, to which we deliver. So we don't want customers that are out of those delivery zones. So this um, set location uh, feature is is very important. So wh when you get here, you go ahead and let me choose, and uh, it says here, for example, a country, city, region, or postal code, what have you. So I went ahead and did that, and I pretended uh, that I was a florist in uh, Vienna, Virginia. So you see, I started um, typing in, uh, you know, Fairfax, Springfield, uh, Vienna. These are all cities that are in my, uh, you know, delivery zone. Now, you'll see, you know, the kind of reach I have, and you know, these numbers are great because you know, like they basically tell you, the, you know, this is the potential uh, number of folks that that I could reach uh, if I put these, uh, place these targeted locations. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, so say for example, I deliver to these three, uh, but I don't deliver to Oakton, Virginia. And Oakton, you know, may be within uh, a certain range of, you know, uh, a reasonable range within my delivery area, but I just can't, you know, it, it's just not, a, uh, what do you call it, cost effective for me to deliver in Oakton. You'll see here that you could, not only could you add uh, cities and zips and what have you, you could exclude them as well. So this uh, is a really important feature because you could um, truly customize the targeting of all these ads. So remember what I mentioned to you, uh, you know, when we were talking about how campaigns are structured and how you have uh, like a general campaign, the AdWords, and then specific ads, and then specific targeting. So, uh, you know, my, my recommendation to you is uh, distill these down and then create specific ads that target specific cities and specific zip codes that are in those cities. Then you could use this to really fine tune the, you know, the targeting. So 
only customers that want that are wanting delivery to those specific uh, geographic locations uh, get these ads. So a lot of florists may may be delivering to five cities. So a lot of people ask me, well, you know, it's tough on SEO because Google wants you to have one place. Well, SEM is a good way to um, to bypass that a challenge with SEO, where you could now target um, you know specific customers in specific geographic areas. So, like another way to to, uh, to to skin this cat is if you hit advanced search, it takes you to um, a way that you know you could even uh, you know set a radius for your delivery area. So this one, you know, just I, I just added Vienna, Virginia, and you see that it, it outlines. You can even here. Well, I want to target anyone that is, uh, and what I would recommend, two to three miles from my from from my area. One thing. It will target, uh, or these ads will uh, show on, uh, you know, for, for for customers using mobile devices. So if they're within one to two miles of your shop, you know, you, of course you want folks with uh, mobile devices uh, to see this ad and because they're near they'll uh, come by and visit so the next thing is is budget um, like I said 600 a month is what we recommend so the budget would be twenty dollars per day and I think a lot of people are, are, are kind of worried because they're like well will I really end up spending six hundred dollars a month more often than not you won't because, uh, like I mentioned, it, again, this depends on whether you're in a geographic area that's, you know, that's pretty crowded and you have a lot of competitors. But most of the time, if if you're if you're uh, one shop out of three, and you're probably the only one that's uh, doing an AdWords campaign, you will dominate that search page, and you won't end up spending that kind of money to uh, garner all these clicks. You'll you'll end up spending uh, less than the um, $600 that we're talking about. The other thing that uh, you know to consider is that uh, this default bid would probably be low in an urban area, but high in a rural rural area. So if if, if you're out in in a small town, you probably could have a default bid of a, of a dollar. Okay. So the next thing that um, Google will ask you is, well, what are your keywords now? Definitely jot down every one of these keywords, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I did a, a keyword planning search, and these are ranked from uh, most popular to uh, less popular. But I mean, they're all popular. They're, they're, you know, these these keywords are getting more than um, 100,000 uh, uh, views every month. So you know, the you know the top of the heap is fresh flowers, flower arrangements, and flower bouquets. Um, for some reason, customers type in these keywords all the time. The next set of keywords that are very popular, same day flower delivery, local florists and flowers. Okay? So for those uh, of you that um, want to bolster your funeral and wedding business, I alluded to, uh, to it earlier, but you could have a separate campaign that just targets funeral flowers, and you could have a separate campaign that targets wedding flowers. And guess what? Like I said, most florists, do not participate in uh, search engine marketing. So if you were the first florist to at least have a local campaign targeting this and then have a couple other campaigns targeting uh, the, you know, the funeral business and the wedding business, you will totally dominate that market. Okay? Uh, and then the second set of keywords are, of course, geographic-based, and those are cities, states, zip codes, venues, have, you know, what have you. So you, know, you would enter your landing page, um, and you know, okay, just a comment on this. So I mentioned to you that um, you know you see this is the fictitious shop, RenatosFlowerShop.com, and uh, I would enter this uh, if I were if I had a campaign that uh, that I wanted to target local customers. And you know, these are uh, and, and these are new customers that may be new to the area, or you know, like people that already know me. However, if I were to um, have a different campaign that was targeting specifically funeral flowers or wedding flowers, guess what? This URL would be different. It would probably be renatosflowershop.com forward slash funeral flowers or whatever subpage you have that um, highlighted uh, funeral or you know forward slash wedding flowers that hide highlighted uh, you know selections for uh, weddings. Now, um, 
This directly relates to what I mentioned earlier about the quality score. Remember, Google will uh, Google will uh, will enable will lift ads higher than even those that are bidding more if the landing page and the ad are are, are relevant and complementary to one another. All right. So let's get back to this. This is uh, again this hyper brand local protection. My bids this. I put in my keywords here. So. Um, you know, recall, you know, one of the reasons why we were, sh we were uh, shying you away from using Google, ex uh, Google AdWords Express is because it didn't have a lot of functionality that we're talking about now. And one is like using keyword match types. So um, flowers, same day delivery. Like as you saw on the previous page, that's a an actual keyword set that people type exactly. So right now it was set at broad match. And like as you'll see on the next slide, um, there's reasons why broad matches aren't good. And then you may want to start setting a lot of these for exact matches or phrase matches. So this is the keyword set for that campaign that I just created. And um, right on the screen, you could set it. But let's talk about this whole match type thing, okay? So a broad match type. So say, for example, I'm a consumer and I wanted to uh, purchase uh, a Samsonite four-wheeled bag. That's a pretty specific search phrase, right? But guess what? If it were a broad match type where, it, you know, Google will say, okay, I'm going to look for Samsonite. I'm going to look for wheels. I'm going to look for bags. I'm going to look for the number four in any order, anywhere. So the match could be antler four wheel bag, Samsonite wheel suit carriers. Now, will that, um, so if, if I'm a consumer and I found that and your ad appeared uh, on that page and I'm a consumer and I click on your ad, I, oops, I probably just wasted a click uh, just because that's not what I was looking for. So uh, let's look at the next level of this broad match type. If you were to add like a plus to Samsonite. Now what you're doing here is you, you know, you're basically saying Samsonite has to absolutely appear in, in the search results. Okay. Um, but it, 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 may, it, may, it may still not be enough because obviously I want to type in Samsonite for wheel bag. You know, I'm looking for a four-wheel, not a two-wheel uh, piece of luggage, but it is Samsonite as well. So that gets me closer to what I want to get. So let's go down to phrase match. Now, this is where you add um, quotes around that. Now, what this does, it will look for this exact phrase, and it could even be in, in any sentence in, in any ad. But at least you, you, you're, you're getting real close to what people um, really want. Uh, and this exact match is when you would put these brackets around the phrase and your ad would only show if people type exactly what you put in those brackets. Okay? So um, at first though, <laughs> okay, I just said all this stuff. Um, but when you first start your campaign, I would say for the first couple of weeks, go ahead and stick with broad match. Just because you want to start gathering data for what the search terms people are actually typing. And then you'll start to see that people um, are typing uh, keywords that you don't want uh, you know, to be used. So that brings us to uh, this other feature called negative keywords. So you'll see here, um, and, and, and what I do is um, I put keywords at the campaign level. And these are the four keywords that I think every florist should put in negative keywords. You don't want anyone looking for cheap flowers, discounted flowers, free flowers, or trying to buy flowers with a coupon. That's not the customer that you want to click on your ad. You only want those folks who are serious and, and, and wanting to purchase. So this is already a good start. If you were to put in these, these four keywords, then um, uh, you, you, know, you made a ton of progress uh, with these ad uh, with these ad campaigns. So let's go ahead and create these ads. Um, you'll find that you have a choice between two types of ads. This new expanded text ad, which this is, allows you to put a description along with your ad. Um, I don't know why Google still has to switch back to standard text ads, because they'll automatically convert this to a standard te text ad if the, if, if the consumer's browser only allows us. But, but nowadays, go ahead and and select new expanded text ad. So you see here, um, you have very limited number of characters. So you kind of have to be creative when you type in 
every line of uh, headline one and headline two. This final, this final URL, um, you could have some, um, some deep URL in here for a landing page, and it won't show. What will definitely show is when you uh, put in the path. So in the path here, even though this, this URL doesn't exist, I, I, I like the fact that you could put in maybe Vienna VA and flowers. So this is uh, what will appear in the ad, uh, like as you see on the right. But um, headline one, uh, you know, use very strong keywords. Um, and as you saw in the uh, keywords uh, page that we showed earlier, local florist is a great a keyword set to put in there. Flowers, same day delivery. And as you see here, um, this ad is targeting uh, Vienna, Virginia. And okay, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm going to harp on it a little bit, but um, uh, what, what we had mentioned earlier is create ads targeting specific cities. A lot of florists, uh, well, well, not even florists, but a lot of people who who, who deliver uh, you know, to the local community, they try to put all the cities in here, you know, Vienna, Fairfax, Oakland, what have you. But um, leverage the, the, the power of being able to uh, you know, specify specific geographic keywords and Google's targeting feature to create ads that specifically target that specific delivery area. It just makes sense. I mean, you're spending the same amount of money, but you're just being smarter uh, with with using the AdWords campaign, if you think like that. So in this case, this ad is is is, is targeting specifically Vienna, Virginia. So um, you know, like in my targeting, I would have put all the uh, zip codes associated with just Vienna, Virginia. And in the description, uh, you know, I just made this up. Express yourself today with a fresh with a fresh flower arrangement or bouquet. Okay, remember I mentioned to you arrangement and bouquet and flower all seem to be very strong keywords. So that's why I put it. In the description. So, just to wrap up, um, you know, uh, this this session today, let's talk about, you know, like the the, the objectives of your campaign, uh, your your KPIs and target metric. So, remember at the at the very beginning, I mentioned to you that you could do pay per click or cost per click, um, or even that CPM where you actually just pay uh, to get the uh, uh, you know thousands of impressions. But when you run an AdWords campaign, you're going to get those thousands of impressions anyway just from running the ad. Remember, not everyone will click your ad, but they'll at least see your ad uh, when they do a search um, for, you know, for something they're looking for. So uh, a great thing about AdWords and the money that you invest, it raises awareness for your brand. Okay? Next. Yes, cost per click really means just that. Uh, people will click on your ad and it will drive traffic straight to your website. So that click may cost you 50 cents, it may cost you $1.50, it may cost you whatever, but at least, uh, you know, consumers have taken the step of clicking to visit, uh, to, you know, to check out what you have to offer. So at least you're making a presentation to um, a, holly, a highly qualified um, consumer. Um, next. Um, those clicks result in conversion. So this is, again, like a different topic that we're talking about, and it's really about, um, you know, like you really need to talk to your web developer about how you could increase conversion of your website by optimizing the shopping experience, streamlining that shopping cart to make sure people don't bail out on you. And uh, you'll see that this is probably the number one area that um, will make or break the uh, website or a, a, sale, a sales for your website. So that, of course, relates to revenue and profit. But again, the ultimate goal, uh, goal here is to grow and maintain a profitable business by uh, building awareness, uh, building traffic, which builds sales, revenue, and profit. So, you know, we talk about this all the time. If you want to read more about really the value proposition of search engine marketing, check out the, the December issue of Floriology. Uh, we wrote an article in there called Organic Rank is Not Enough. So we're building the case of why you really need to do SEM. And so people will say, well, how could you help me further a Floriology Institute? Well, if you have any questions on this specific webinar, um, go ahead and, and email me at renato at floriologyinstitute.com. And, uh, and also visit floriologyinstitute.com uh, uh, because we have a great blog there where we talk about 
uh, these topics and more. And one thing that we're going to be doing uh, come spring 2017 is we're going to be launching a new uh, service that uh, will help will help you not only with SEM but also with your SEO, social reviews, and more. So um, stay tuned with us, and we'll we'll provide more information closer to launch. So with that, I'd like to thank you for um, attending this webinar today. And again, um, these are ways to reach out to me. Uh, please don't be shy. And I look forward to engaging with you guys. Great. Thank you, Renato. So we actually have some questions um, live from some people. Alyssa and Matt would like to know, what does KPI stand for and why is it important? Oh, I'm sorry. KPI is a Key Performance Indicators. So that's what the acronym stands for. We're just talking about um, metrics that uh, you really need to pay attention to to make sure that these uh, AdWords campaigns are effective. Thank you. And Connie would like to know, is SEO still something I need to invest in as well, or should I focus entirely on SEM? That is a great, great question. And the answer is yes. Um, like I mentioned, that whole idea of quality score, SEO, having great SEO will improve that quality score, which thus improves the relevance of your ads. So when people say, well, what's the benefit of having a more relevant ad? It just means that you'll actually pay less just because, you know, remember what the thing I mentioned? Um, because it's a bidding thing, people automatically assume that, okay, well, if I just pour money into it, I'll get more clicks. Yeah, in theory, that's correct. But um, Google confirms with me that, no, 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 that's not correct. Uh, if you are one of those people that pour money into an ad campaign, but your landing page isn't optimized or it doesn't complement the ad, they'll actually um, rank you lower than an ad that is paying less uh, but has more relevance because they have strong SEO. So continue to, do, uh, to invest in strong SEO. And uh, just a quick tip here. Um, SEO uh, is not um, what it used to be. A lot of people thought there were a lot of uh, tricks and, 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 and other schemes to, to trick the search engines into um, uh, you know, getting a better rank. But quite frankly, uh, what it is, uh, you know, the best method of, of getting better SEO is just content on your website. You know, having new content on your website on a weekly, if not other daily basis. So um, our, our tip for SEO is uh, build website content. Ashley, any other questions? Great, thank you. So we actually did have one more question. Can okay. we hire anyone within Bluenet to do the legwork for us? There are things I do well, and then there are things that are well computers. Uh, yes. <laughs> like what we said, uh, stay tuned and uh, you'll discover that uh, these new services that uh, we offer in the spring of 27 uh, will, will, will do a lot to, to help your business and build uh, that website traffic for you. So um, stay tuned. All right, well, nobody has any more questions. This concludes our webinar. If you come up with anything that you'd like more um, clarification or answers on, please feel free to email Renato at renato at com. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you attending.